Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video. Now, I've been a little bit under the weather, unfortunately, so apologies for my voice. I've had that, whatever that thing is that's going round at the moment. But I thought I'd do a follow-up video on the last Timu Tech stuff that we had, because we had a few items that arrived damaged or weren't working as they should do, including the frequency standard and those nightlight things. And we'll do a little bit of a bonus teardown on some of the other Timu novelties as well. So let's get over on the bench and take a look at what we can make of this. Okay, so update on the Timu frequency standard then. So this one obviously arrived damaged and apologies for my voice, I've been rather under the weather lately. So when this product arrived, the capacitor was still attached, as you saw in the last video. Unfortunately, it's pulled the pad off the board. Now the capacitor was sort of flapping about here. My plan was to very gently try and desolder it and reattach what was left of the pad to the board. But unfortunately, while this was sitting on my bench and I was doing something else I managed to knock the capacitor off it with something else rather clumsily so I'm left with no pad there but I've got a pad there so I'm going to effect not what I'd describe as a actual repair but I'm going to effect a way of making this work now just so we can test it now there was sufficient enough of the pad left to ascertain that that goes to ground. So we can see that that side of that capacitor goes to there and that side goes to ground. Now I did have a look at this and there's not enough there to solder anything or do anything with. So we've determined that the negative leg of the capacitor goes to ground. Then I just need to put a capacitor on there of a suitable value and put that leg to ground, which could be on there or on there, I guess, whichever's nearest. So I'm just going to substitute for now a regular electrolytic capacitor, just so we can test this thing out and see if it's any good. Really, I don't want to spend a lot of time or money on this device until I know it's actually going to be useful. <laughs> I just want to see if it works, basically. And I don't really have any of these in stock, so I'm just going to effect um, what I would describe as not, not necessarily a bodge, but a temporary repair. So we know that that goes to ground, so um, I could go to there or I could go to... Ground is also there. Now this is not necessarily my finest work. There's definitely something going on with Timu quality control in that last batch of stuff. So if we can effect a repair on this, then we'll have a look at those little night lights, because I think we had one, didn't we, that wasn't working properly. One of the filaments wasn't working, so we could have a look at that. Well, this is just a temporary bodge. Positive leads go into there, which goes to this C5. We know that, and we know negative was going to there, but that pad's no longer in existence. So it's going to go to the negative on this terminal here, which is fine because they all go to ground. So that's fine. It'll do the job for now. This one's unfortunately no good. Whether we'll encounter any other problems with this, we'll find out. So now we might be able to power it up this time. So we're doing better than last time already. So we need DC 7 to 13 volts. Right. Okay, so I've got a barrel jack hooked up to my bench power supply. Now, that was another disappointment with this. It was supposed to come with a barrel jack to 9 volt battery adapter, which it didn't. But never mind. This is apparently center positive. So uh, I'm giving it 9 because they showed it with a 9 volt battery. It claims in the spec it needs a 5 minute warm up time to reach accuracy. Now I don't know if we're going to get any indication on here as to whether it's on or not. I've got a couple of adapters here we can use. So obviously if I was going to use this for anything I would do a slightly better repair on it. You know if it works it might be worth doing something with it. I don't know. I don't hold a lot of hope for it. Limit the current. I'm going to switch this on and we'll see what current it draws. Oh, we have got a little LED there, so it's doing something. That's always a good thing. Okay, about 400 milliamps. All right, let's see if it puts anything out then, shall we? Let's hook it up to the counter. Well, okay, not bad. Now, it does claim five minutes warming up time is required. 
So at least we've got something out of it. So I've had this running for a good 15 minutes now and it seems to have stabilized. It definitely takes longer than the stated five minutes to warm up. I'd say it's more like 10. I've had it on for about 15 minutes and it seems to have stabilized quite nicely there. So we've seen it's putting out the 10 megahertz. Let's maybe have a quick look on the scope. Right, so this is the TTL output from the frequency standard. And this is the sine output. Okay. So we've got two outputs on this frequency standard. You've got your TTL and you've got your sine. And yeah, there is our sine output. And yeah, indeed, 10 megahertz. The scope agrees with the frequency counter. So this is my off-air frequency standard, 10 megahertz. And with that hooked up to the counter, you can see that's bang on, 10 megahertz exactly there. Now they have very kindly provided a nice little trim pot on the board so we can adjust this. Takes a few turns, nearly there. Give it another go. I think we're kind of on the limit here, but we got it. Yep, 10 meg, exactly. Fantastic, look at that. We are literally right on the limit of that trim pot though. <laughs> it's got no more to give, but there you go. 10 megs. So from an item that arrived damaged and I thought it had no hope is actually done all right. Might be worth me properly replacing that capacitor as it does seem to perform its duties of putting out 10 megs. And it wasn't even a lot of money. Probably one of the better Timu Tech Time items. Well, I've had this running for quite some time since I did that adjustment and it's remained rock solid. So what can I say? I'm happy with that. All right, so what we do, we take a look at these little night lights as well while we're doing some Timu fixing, because I think there was one of these, I think it was this one that didn't work properly last time. So let's see, let's make some room, see what we can do with that. Now we know this one works. So we took a look at some of these novelty items on the last Timu Tech episode and I thought it'd be a good chance to do a teardown on some of these and have a look at what's inside. But also we got this little night light here that only one of these little filaments works on it. Whereas these ones, both filaments work. So I thought, let's, let's see if we can get this out and see if there's anything we can do. Maybe it's a bad solder joint or one, maybe one of these little LED filaments is faulty. I don't know, but I was curious enough that I thought we'd have a look. I'm kind of hoping it can just be prized out because this is, this is glass. So I don't want to break that. I mean, I know these were ridiculously cheap, but it'd be kind of nice if I could get it out in one piece. This may not be the correct tool. I don't believe there is a correct tool for this. A spudger maybe. It seems to be doing the trick though. Yeah, I think we're good here. Ah, there we go. That was easier than I thought it would be, right? So it's the glass jar. So get that out of the way for now. So let's see, that's the jar gone. It's a cool little thing. I've not really used these LED filaments very much. I've seen them about, but Oh, it's not going to take a genius to work out what the problem is with this product, is it? Ah, that's not... <laughs> well, there's possibly the quickest fix ever. It's just not sold it on very well. Definitely something going on at Timu Quality Control in that last batch of stuff I got. Right, so it would be nice if that was on this side. It should go on the edge looking at the other ones here yeah it should be on the side of that resistor so it should be there in an ideal world all right let me just sort this out then okay. potentially the easiest repair ever isn't it Wonder if it works let's have a look if the touch thing will work without the... Oh, it does. Oh, yes, there we go. Look at that. Fantastic. We have it working. 
and then you can dim it down. Yeah, lovely. Turn it off, on, make it brighter. Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. There we go. Cool. Yay. Awesome. Oh, chuffed with that. This is the thing you get with buying the cheaper end of products. <laughs> you get to repair them yourself before you use them. That's quite cool. We've got all of them. There we go. So we've got them all working now. Fantastic. Ah, pleased with that. It's the little things in life. And that's got to be the easiest repair ever. Not really a repair, but uh, kind of. Anyway, I thought while we were taking a look at those Timu lamps, we'd take a look at a couple of the other Timu items and maybe take these apart just to see what's in there. Now, if you'd not seen the last episode of Timu Tech, you wouldn't have seen the fact that I was extremely underwhelmed with these supposed flame effect. That's even worse than I remember. <laughs> not impressed with that at all. But we had this this little gadget as well, which makes the whole thing somehow even worse. You plug that in and then you go, close the light, open the light, close the light. Yes, yeah, so it does what it's supposed to, but I figured let's have a look inside these things and see what's in there, what makes it tick. Get a bit more enjoyment out of these products. Now, how can I get this apart? Is this just gonna, ah, good. Okay, so, right, so it's just a strip of LEDs. I've got one little chip there, too sure. Does that, ah, it does. Doesn't look like there's anything on that chip, no. It looks like they've moved, removed the marking so you can't tell what it is. Mouse bites, where they separate the strips. Must have been on the end of the row, this one. So literally that's, that is all it is. So quite an anticlimactic teardown, really. There's not really a lot in there to see. One little IC on there that we can't tell what it is because it's got no numbers on it, but satisfies my curiosity. Oh, look at that. That's somehow better, isn't it? It's interesting to note though, the, the pattern. So you've got two that remain lit constantly, and then you've got these four that kind of blink with the right atmosphere, I guess kind of, yeah, it's kind of got, if you look at just the glow, <laughs> don't look at that. Yeah, that's kind of, eh. <laughs> okay. Well, that is literally it. I was quite underwhelmed by these, but you see, this is why I buy these. So you don't have to. I buy them and test them out. So you can buy the ones that are good and maybe not these. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. Let's see if we can get this one apart. There might be more interesting stuff in here to look at. They've somehow managed to make the cheapest USB connector. When in doubt, small screwdriver in the nearest gap will do the trick. What do we have? Probably not a lot. I don't know. Right, oh, here we go. Right, here's the little board then. So, wow, look how wonky that is. I don't know which one is worse. That's why I was having trouble plugging stuff into it. The connector's completely wonky on the board. That is not a great quality USB connector at all. We've got a date on here, have we? 25th of the 3rd, 2025. Can we glean anything from this board? Oh, we can actually see what the chip is, I think, on this one. So BGA47C4B, can't find any information on that. When I look it up, some sort of unknown microcontroller. And we've got a couple of little transistors there. Mic one, there we go. That is what is listening for you to say, open the light, close the light, and whatever else you're gonna say to it and have a nice little chat with it. That, that seems to be it. I don't know what I was hoping to find inside there, but now we know what is in this little device. 
perhaps not the most thrilling video today. Well, at least we know what's in there now. Now, these were kind of just novelty things that I bought for the Christmas episode, so they're not things that you're most likely gonna buy, but just in case you were wondering what is in there, not the finest quality, but it was cheap. So there we go, at least now we know what's inside some of these Timu novelty products. Not a lot, but it was fun taking a look, wasn't it? I'm quite surprised by the frequency standard as it does seem to work rather well. And it remains rock solid at 10 megahertz with that bit of adjustment. And I'll have to take the time to do a better job with that capacitor replacement. That was just a quick bodge for this video. And of course, as I'm feeling a little sorry for myself at the moment, probably not my best work, but hey, it works. And I'm glad I got the little night light working. I know they were only cheap, but they're quite cool. I quite like these. There's something rather charming about them and they seem like they'll be quite useful. <laughs> How they'll fare in the long term, I don't know. Same with the frequency standard, but I'll let you know if I have any further problems with them. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and as always, a massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. And big thanks to all my Patreon and YouTube members. Don't forget, you can support me on Patreon and on Buy Me A Coffee, which really does help to support the channel and keeps me making more videos. I'll be back soon with another tech-related video, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.